I'd like to say great day to the viewing audience. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit. I am Dr. Stefan Williams and I'll be your host for today's program. We're going to begin a new series entitled DNA and the Patron. And I'd like those of you to view this broadcast today to get out your Bibles, your notebooks, your pens, your pencils, your highlighters, and study with us. Let's get into the series. We would not consider this book complete if we did not write something regarding the substance, DNA, which scientists believe is the essence of the body or life itself. Work is going along hourly at a fervorous pace and the expectations are high that sooner or later a breakthrough will come in man's investigation of this substance that will give him unlimited control of not only the physical makeup of a man but also control over his mental processes and behaviorism. What is the fuss and excitement all about? Here it is in a few concise words in simplified terms. About 12 years ago, 1944, scientists working with genetic material found out that it was composed of nucleosid acid. Nucleosid acids are of two types. Deal XY bond nucleic acid DNA, which is found only in chromosomes in the nucleus of a cell. And ribo nucleus acid RNA, which is located mainly outside the nucleus, that is in the cytoplasm. This DNA was shown to be the parent substance or the very essence of inheritance and thus is the primordial substance from which all cells originate. Some scientists went so far as to call this substance life itself. The genes and chromosomes which comprise the nucleus of a cell were already known to be hereditary de determinators or determiners, excuse me, determiners of one complete physical makeup and his mental capacity. Hence, the next problem to be solved was the question of how this parent substance DNA goes about to determine the particular physical characteristics since our knowledge of hereditary characteristics or genetic materials had already proved that there was a definite order lineness and immutability to the process and that nothing came about by happenstance. This line of investigation led to the discovery that DNA contained within itself a blueprint or pattern or genetic code. Get up there to the vision. Elohim. Once again, this line of investigation led to the discovery that, that DNA contained within itself a blueprint or pattern or genetic code or law by which it could reproduce itself and convey or transfer its desires or instructions on the on to the cytoplasma of the cells. This transferring over 
over or reproduction of the message of DNA was accomplished through a substance known as messenger RNA, which transfers the information to ribosomes, minute protein particles in the cytoplasm of the cell. And we have here where it says cell here. Okay. All right. CNA, RNA. All right. Keep it there. In the cytoplasm of the cell that is outside the nucleus. Thus, RNA acts as a go between. Here it is, RNA acts as a go-between or the intermediary between the DNA, the parent substance, okay, of the nucleus and the ribosome of the cell body. All right, so it says ribosomes here. Not only does the RNA carry the message but it faithfully carries out the dictates of the parent substance. We understand who the parent substance is. So you see it says her substance. That parent substance is Yahweh Elohim. All right. It has no power of its own to alter, revamp, or modify these instructions by virtue of the messages or instructions carried by RNA to the ribosomes of the cytoplasm, the wishes or desires of DNA are accomplished in the making up and construction of protein particles in the cell body to point to the point that they become exactly what the parent substance DNA has detected. Excuse me. The DNA has dictated. Very simply then this is the manner by which genes and chromosomes bring about the effect, the, the tremendous and profound influence on our physical and mental characteristics. Every one of us is a product of such influences, whether we like them or not. Okay. Scientists have immediately realized the tremendous possibilities of these latest discoveries concerning the very essence of the genes and chromosomes which, is, which determine our very being. Okay? They have postulated that if one could find out just how these chemical processes are accomplished, then they might be able to change or modify physical or mental characteristics at will and by their own volition and maybe even make a man. In this survival of the fittest world with hostile nations all around this race to find out these things has become just as important as the nuclear arms race. For such knowledge in the hands of an enemy nation could spell doom for those of another. Likewise, there is another great and impending or pressing need with concerns longevity and freedom from disease, both physical and mental. Back here, whole chart. If mankind could learn how to alter the secular makeup of a man, he probably would 
expand his lifespan, improve his resistance to diseases such as cancer, and slow down, retard, or even stop the fast rate at which people are going insane. This in a capsulized form is the story of DNA. And we have intentionally left out many polytechnic considerations because we did not want to bury the reader in a fog of complex scientific data, but have desired to get right at the core of subject and show what DNA is all about and this by comparing it with the pattern. Back up there. Say up, up there. Once again, we see this here DNA, RNA, cell, and then it's this here pattern. Okay? And right here, this is Elohim, see? The archetype original pattern of the entire universe. Okay? Keep it there. We further want to point up the utter fertility or uselessness of man's present course in thinking that he is about to discover life itself or that he will be able to control or manipulate man's kind physical or behavioral characteristics as he thinks. Now, before we begin to show that everything that the scientists have discovered in reference to DNA and RNA and the like compares polytechnically to the threefold archetype pattern with this Yahweh Elohim. Okay? Okay? The threefold archetype pattern with this Yahweh Elohim. And we have it right here. See? Okay? Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. Okay? Back here. that we have been discussing in this book. Let us say that we have dogmatically claimed and affirmed that everything in the universe, okay, the visible, the visible, and the invisible is one or another expression of the invisible, self-existing, eternal, and independent deity who is spirit, and that's Yahweh, and whose name is Yahweh, see? Since these scientists feel that they are right on the heels of discovering life itself, might we ask them this question? Do they expect to derive life which is spiritual or is Yahweh himself? Keep it there, Lockett. I need red reader, please. John, the fourth chapter and the 24th verse, please. John 4 and 24 from the Holy Name Bible. For Yahweh is pure spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, reader. From a material substance such as DNA, once again, or RNA, if they, if they do, they certainly have the cart before the horse and are definitely on the wrong course. All matter comes from spirit, what you have here, see? All matter comes from spirit, see, who is Yahweh. Or matter is spirit materialized. Spirit or Yahweh is the source, see, substance of all things material. One can therefore derive material things from material things.
but cannot derive spiritual things from material things, okay? All right? Okay? Once again, but cannot derive spiritual things, okay, from material things. Life cannot be synthesized in the test tube. It is definitely not chemical or material. However, since all matter is derived from spirit by a divine threefold pattern, okay, from a divine threefold pattern, okay, It is possible to understand, know, and recognize spiritual things by a knowledge of material things. Okay, get this and this. Make sure you can see it. Lock it in. I need red reader, please. Romans, the first chapter, verse 19 and 20, please. Romans 1, 19 and 20 from the Holy Name Bible. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh has shown it unto them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, mm -hmm. being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, mm -hmm. so that they are without excuse. Thank you, reader. Therefore, if... These scientists knew how to interpret their findings in reference to DNA. Back here. Once again. Therefore, if the, the scientists knew how to interpret their findings in reference to DNA, etc., they would have a profound knowledge of the etern eternal creator, who was Yahweh, the eternal creator, Okay. And would glorify and honor him, see. But being blinded to the reality of their findings, they can only glorify and honor one another. Okay? Which we have here, see. See, it says signs of mind. All they, all they can do, see, is glorify and honor one another another okay all right back here we have thoroughly discussed and exalted the subject of Yahweh being pure spirit all right Yahweh being pure spirit which is indiscernible, incomprehensible, and inscrutable in this condition. He is the source, right here, substance, limits, and bounds of all things both invisible and visible, spiritual and material. All things abide in pure spirit. Keep it there. I need a red reader, please. Acts 17 chapter and verse 28, please. Acts 17 and 28 from the Holy Name Bible. For in him we live and move and have our beings, mm -hmm. as some of our, as some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Thank you, reader. And this is what this word philo projectiveness that means what uh, instinctive love for one's offspring, okay? All right? Thank you, reader. And the same pure spirit 
pervades and animates all things. There is nothing co-eternal. There is nothing co-eternal or co-existence with this pure spirit. And nothing abides outside of it. Okay? Nothing abides outside of it. It is itself the essence or substance of life of everything that exists. This pure spirit is likened unto the cloud that Moses abided in while atop Mount Sinai, which you have here. See? Get all this right here. See Moses in there. Once again, this pure spirit is likened unto the cloud that Moses abided in while atop Mount Sinai. And we see where it says right here, Mount Sinai. And Moses is in the cloud on top of Mount Sinai here. Once again, this pure spirit likened unto the cloud that Moses abided in while atop Mount Sinai when he beheld in a vision, here it is, panoramic vision, the Elohim of Israel. I need a red reader, please. Exodus 24, chapter verse 9 and 10, please. Exodus 24, 9 and 10, from the Holy Name Bible. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in its clearness. Thank you, reader. Also read, reader, um, the 16th and 17th verses, please, from Exodus 24, chapter, excuse me. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days, colon, and the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Mm -hmm. And the sight of the glory of Yahweh was like a divine fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. Thank you, reader. And um, once again, this pure spirit is likened unto the cloud that Moses abided in while atop Mount Sinai when he beheld in a vision. Once again, see, panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses in 1490 B.Y. I mean, before the birth of Yahshua. Okay. The, Hel the Elohim Israel, once again, according to Exodus 24, chapter verse 9 and 10, which the reader already read, and the creation of the universe, according to Exodus 24, chapter verse 16 and 17. Keep it there. As a matter of fact, you can get, um, get down here. Get this uh, five days in there. And I'll be reading Genesis, the first chapter, verse 1 through 31 from, from the King James Bible. And certain the true and correct name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, his divine title, Elohim. Okay. 
Once again, Genesis, the first chapter, verses 1 to the 31st verse, King James Version says, In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. Okay? And the earth was and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay. And the spirit of Elohim moved, see it here, upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, Let there be light. And there was light. And that will conclude this week's program. Until we meet again next week, I'd like to leave with these few words. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the precious kingdom of Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah.